What's going on today? Uh, this is David again. Just going to bring you another video. Um, it's an it's going to be an interesting video because I think uh, you see this a lot, especially if you're an Israelite or a person of faith, Gentile, and you run into the Israelites. And you, if you're under that thought process of the Lord's face, what does it matter? It doesn't matter what he looks like. That is fraudulent. <laughs> it is 100 imperative that you know what he looks like. Because if you know what Christ looks like, then if you study the word accordingly, you will know that you have to go to his people to get his word because they are the only servants on the earth. No one else. Only the Israelites are the servants. So if I know what Christ looks like, then I will know where I need to go to find the word of God. I'm a Gentile. Even if I'm an Israelite, let's say I'm an Israelite that doesn't really know I'm an Israelite, but I come to the knowledge and I want to learn from somebody. You need to find the man within your community or Israelite uh, community who has the money to teach you. Period. If you don't know what Christ looks like, you can't get through the door to get into heaven. Only the men who are the great men, the chosen, who the line of man, you can get through the door. So by saying it doesn't matter, then you don't believe you don't believe in Christ. You're set for destruction. You're drunk from the wine of the woman, uh, the woman spread Lord created, and you've inherited folly, as it says in Proverbs. You that's your inheritance, that folly. Um, I'm gonna bring some things out here that I help you understand why it's important you know the face, and that uh, it's written. <laughs> okay, and uh, you know, let's give our praise. First and foremost, give our praise to Most High God, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, uh, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and all praise you, lost sheep of the house of Israel, and the Gentiles who fear God, um, those who were called from the beginning, who believe the truth, who have the ears to hear. Um, the Lord's face, man. You must know the Lord's face. Anyone bringing you any other thought process concerning it is of the devil. Don't be taken. Don't don't be taken off the straight path with that thought process. It will fail you. You must know who the Lord looks like. You have to find His people, right? So back then, if believers didn't know what He looked like, where would they go if you walked around? How would you know? Right? You wouldn't know where to go. So they obviously had to know something when He was walking around. Um, let's get. Let's go. Let's go, let me start out with uh, Psalms. And then I'm just going to break down some few points. I could really break this down. I could really beat it up. But I'm going to uh, I'm gonna use a few parts I think that uh, you need to hear. And I will just go from there. Let's get it. Let's go to uh, Psalms chapter 27, verses 7 through 14. I think it's King David, if I remember correctly. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, seek ye my face. My heart said, My heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Right. His heart said to him, I'm going to seek your face. You have to put all your heart into this word. Israel's power is to sit still and just study. Come back to your Lord. Your power is not running in the streets, protesting. That's not your power. Your power is the word. Uh, Genesis 49, uh, uh, Judah's aligns well. The food, the word is what raises you up. Let's read. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Right. So when he puts us away, right, you don't know his face. But if you seek it with your heart, you will learn it. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Right. Because the Lord is not one-sided. Okay. If he's dealing with you, that's who he's dealing with. You've been called. That's it. 
as an Israelite or a Gentile, you're going to run into a situation in your life where people that you think you're supposed to be dealing with every day are not going to really be with you. The Lord has called you to him so you can get salvation or be saved. Let's read. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Plain path because of your enemies. Okay? Anyone who's not following the truth as an Israelite, they're not to really be trusted by you. You're not my brother. You know what I'm saying? If if I can't trust you and we're both the same, you know you're Israel, you don't know you're Israel, and you're not trying to hear the word of the Lord, I can't trust you. So why, oh Lord, lead me on a plain path. Nobody is exempt. Okay, let's read. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. False witnesses. Oh, it doesn't matter. This was a false witness brought to you by false witnesses. This is not the truth. This guy is not in the Bible. It's not in Scripture anywhere. Let's read. And they breathed out cruelty. Because when you got that picture, they were putting you uh, Israelites down in South America. They put them on sticks and roast them over the fire. They were doing all sorts of stuff with that image and that cross. But it's the curses. The Lord said he was going to do it to you because you don't love his word with all your heart to find the truth. You don't consider anything past being in this country. So you get punished till this day. Let's read. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Right. Study the word and wait. That is Israel's strength. Not protesting in the streets, all that nonsense. It's going to fail you. You will die by the hundreds. I was watching this video for all these Negro-only Israelites. I was watching this video just yesterday uh, about that South Dakota situation with uh, the leader um, giving his speech, talking about the commandments. You better watch that. Um, he was uh, he mentioned it. He knows what's going on. But um, Native Indians, Israel, South Dakota, they were protesting the street, and there was this young Native Indian girl. She was holding this sign, and it said, honor the treaties, right? It says, honor the treaties. And I went straight to uh, Proverbs. I think it's Proverbs 18. The poor useth in treaties. She doesn't have knowledge of self. But the rich speaketh roughly. You don't be begging Honor the treaty means we know you've killed us, but please just honor what you said you're going to do for us. That's weakness. It's not going to get anything solved for you. Anyway, just some of my brother out there saying that the native Indians aren't Israel. It's crazy. Let's go to Odes of Solomon chapter 7. Here we go. As the impulse of anger against evil sows the impulse of joy over what is lovely, and brings in of its fruits without restraint. My joy is the Lord, and my impulse is toward him. David's heart was towards the Lord, his impulse. Your first instinct is to consider the word of the Lord. The path of mine is excellent. That makes your path excellent. For I have a helper, the Lord, Yahawashai. He hath caused me to know himself, to see his face. Without grudging, by his simplicity, his kindness has humbled his greatness. He became like me. So he had to look like someone who needed to walk the plain path. In order that I might receive him, right, that you might receive him. Because you talk to an Israelite today, and you say, hey man, you better read the Bible. What image do you think comes up in their mind first? What, are they, what is the first thing they say? Oh man, that's a white man's. And they use that book in slavery. 
It was a scheme against you. Right? Part of the curses. Lord said in Deuteronomy 28, they're going to serve their gods, both wood and stone. The cross, their image, that's the first thing they say. So the Lord has to reveal who he really is so his Israelite, so his children can come back to him. Let's read. He was reckoned like myself in order that I might put him on. That's right. So you can be stripped of that strange covering and start making yourself the way you're supposed to be in life as an Israelite. And I tremble not when I saw him because he was gracious to me. Like my nature, he became that I might learn him and like my form. Because you Israelites have been told not to like yourselves. Supremacy. The scheme. Let's read. That I might that I might not turn back from him. So now you see that image, you know it's a lie. So you won't turn away from it. The father of knowledge is the word of knowledge. He who created wisdom is wiser than his works. And he, and he who created me when yet I was not new, what I should do when I came into being right. So he knew that you have been sanctified from the beginning to run into the knowledge of what he really looks like so you can come back and serve him. So you have no excuses. Wherefore, he pitied me, pitied me of his abundant grace. That's part of grace. Let's read. And grant me to ask from him and to receive from his sacrifice. Right. You get to receive from the Lord's sacrifice. Let's read. Your inheritance. Because he it is that is incorrupt, the fullness of ages, and the father of them, the father of the Israelites, so-called Negroes, native indigenous Indians, so-called Islanders of native Indian descent, Negro descent, and confusion of face, same background. You are the children of Israel who are scattered abroad all over the earth. Let's read. And he hath given him to be seen of them that are his, right, in order that they may recognize him that made them and that they, may, that, that they might not suppose that they came of themselves. So you're not out here on your own without no God. For knowledge have he appointed as its way. He hath widened it and extended it and brought it to all perfection. This is his power through the spirit that you're learning the truth of who he looks like. And set over it the traces of his light. And I walked therein from the beginning even to the end. For by him it was wrought, and he was resting in the sun. And for its salvation, he will take hold of everything. Salvation, he's going to take over the dominion of the earth. And the Most High shall be known in his saints, the Israelites, to announce to those that have songs of the coming of the Lord. Right. Right. So the saints have to know it. Right. The saints basically are the, like the elect. And they're going to announce to the other men who know the songs of the Lord. So the Israelites must know who their Lord looks like. Let's keep going. Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 10 through 14. This might go to two parts. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years being accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good work toward you and causing you to return to this place. That's right. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end, your inheritance. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, because you know what he looks like. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I'll be found of you. The Israelites who are seeking this truth with all their heart, they are going to find what he looks like. Those people who say it doesn't matter, they don't know anything. They're drunk. Saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I'll bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Right. So you were carried away captive back in Rome and from the land of Africa, the western coast of Africa. But you are from Israel, northeast Israel, northeast Africa. 
Let's read book of Adam and Eve, first book of Adam and Eve, chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Then Adam said unto, unto Yahawashai, O Lord, take thou my soul, and let me not see the gloom here any more, or remove me to some place where there is no darkness. Right, this is what's happening to you in Babylon. But God the Lord said to Adam, Verily I say unto thee, This darkness will pass from thee every day I have determined for thee until the fulfillment of my covenant, when I will save thee and bring thee back again into the garden, into the abode of light, Thou longest for, wherein is no darkness. I will bring thee to it in the kingdom of heaven. And and said again said God unto Adam, All this misery that thou hast been made to take upon thee because of thy transgression will not free thee from the hand of Satan, and will not save thee, but I will, when I shall come down from heaven, and shall become flesh of thy seed. Right. So he has to become flesh of of the seed of the righteous line of Adam, which became Israel. So you need to know who he looks like. What does his flesh look like? Because if you want to get saved, right, or receive salvation as an Israelite, or be saved as a Gentile, who does he look like? Because it's him who's going to wake up his servants. Let's read. And take upon me the infirmity from which thou sufferest. Then the, then the darkness that came upon thee in this cave shall come upon me in the grave when I am in the flesh of thy seed. And I, who am without years, shall be subject to the reckoning of years, of times, of months, and of days. And I shall be reckoned as one of the sons of men. So he's going to look like one of the sons of men, the line of man. In order to save thee. And God ceased to commune with Adam. That's right. So he's going to become one of the sons of men uh, so that he can save. <clears throat> so he can save the Israelites. So anybody who believes who the father is sanctified from the beginning to believe and know when he's here, you need to know what he looks like. You need to know the righteous line. So saying it doesn't matter again is foolishness. It's blasphemy. Let's read the life of Adam and Eve, chapter 13. The devil replied, Adam, what are you saying to me? It was on account of you that I was thrown out of heaven. When you were formed, I was expelled from the presence of God and banished from the company of the angels. When God breathed into you the breath of life, into Adam the breath of life, knowledge and wisdom to heal you. Let's read. And your face and likeness was made in the image of God. Your face and likeness, Adam, the line of man, is the image of God. Michael brought you and made us and made us worship you in the sight of God. And the Lord God said, Here is Adam. I have made him in our image and likeness, the Father and the Son. And Michael went out and called all the angels, saying, Worship the image of God as the Lord God has commanded. And Michael himself worshiped first. And then he called me and said, Worship the image of God. And I answered, I have no duty to worship Adam. And since Michael kept urging me to worship, I said to him, Why do you urge me? I will not worship an inferior and younger being than I, than I am. Right. Satan. Right. So when you're telling people that Christ looks like the line of man, a so-called black man from the house of Judah, what spirit is that when they're saying, ah, that doesn't matter. That's Satan. Because he doesn't want to worship your image. Let's read. I am his senior in creation. Before he was made, I was already a maid. He ought to worship me. Right, because we're, see down here in the earth, we're inferior. Remember, your, your brainwashed to think you're a slave, and everyone else thinks you're a slave. So when you're saying the Lord looks like you, it can't be you. You're inferior to us. Because we're taught, we're, that other image, that's us. We're God. That's Satan. Let's read. When the rest of the angels who were under me heard this, they too refused to worship him. Right, that's why all these other nations have all, the other, all these other gods. 
It's the spirit of Satan and his hosts because they don't want to worship the true living power. So they give you Islam, Christianity, uh, Buddhism, all this other stuff in the world. But that's from the Lord also. He created it. You got to seek the true God with all your heart. And Michael said, worship the image of God. And if you will not worship him, you will you will make the Lord God very angry. And I said, if he is angry with me, I will set my seat above the stars of heaven and I'll be like the most high. Right. He wants to set his seat above the stars. He's not a star. Satan and his hosts. He wants to be like the most high. So he has to portray himself to being God to you. Deception, supremacy. Who brought that to you? Spaniards? That's right. Esau. And it's in, it's all the church buildings. Church buildings, TV shows, you get that image all the time. The Lord's face, the book of the secrets of Enoch, chapter 22. I saw the appearance of the Lord's face like iron made to glow in fire and brought out emitting sparks and it burns. Right. So what did, he, what did John say? His eyes were uh, red like fire. His face, he was in his glory. His hair was white like wool. Right. Hold on a second. Right. Let's read. Thus I saw the Lord's face, but the Lord's face is ineffable marvelous and very awful and very, very terrible. That's right. And who am I to tell the Lord's unspeakable being? And it was very wonderful face. And I cannot tell the quantity of his many instructions and various voices, right? He has different, he uses different voices. He speaks to the temple who will be the servants. So you don't know if who you're talking to or watching, if that's the spirit of the Lord coming through them. You need to know that voice that, that, let's say, for example, if it was me, my voice is given to me by the Lord, right? So he could be using my voice to bring it to you. So if you're watching some Israelite or that voice could be from Yahweh Shai. He has various voices. Let's read. The Lord's throne is very great and not made with hands, nor the quantity of those standing around him, troops of cherubim and seraphim nor their incessant singing or his immutable beauty. And who shall tell the ineffable, ineffable greatness of his glory? And I fell prone and bowed down to the Lord. And the Lord with his lips said to me, Have courage, Enoch. Do not fear. Arise and stand before my face into eternity. Right, because Enoch saw everything. And the orchestrate Michael lifted me up and led me before the Lord's face. And the Lord said to, to his servants, tempting them, let Enoch stand before my face into eternity. And the glorious ones bowed down to the Lord and said, let Enoch go according to thy word. And the Lord said to Michael, go and take Enoch from out of his earthly garments and anoint him with sweet ointment and put him into the garments of my glory. Enoch is a great man. He knows it from the beginning to the end. And Michael did thus as the Lord told him. He anointed me and dressed me, and the appearance of that ointment is more than the great light. And his ointment is like sweet dew, and his smell mild, shining like the sun's rays. And I looked at myself and was like one of his glorious ones, angels. Right? And the Lord summoned one of the archangels by the name of Privil, whose knowledge was quicker than wisdom than, other, than the other archangels, who wrote all the deeds of the Lord. And the Lord said to Privil, Bring out the books from my storehouses and a reed of quick writing and give it to Enoch and deliver to him the choice of and the choice and comforting books out of thy hand. That's right. The books of the Lord, not the books of my camp leader or my so-called pastor or some Roman Catholic church who's trying to tell you what's what. The books of the Lord. Let's read. Let's 
I have a bunch in here. Let's go to uh Let's do Secrets of Enoch, chapter 33, talking about the Lord's face, what it means to you in the world and in Israelite. Uh, chapter 33, and I appointed the eighth day also, that the eighth day should be the first created after my work, and that the first seven revolve in the form of the seven thousand, and that at the beginning of the eight thousand there should be a time of not counting, endless, and neither years nor months, nor weeks, nor days, nor hours. And now, Enoch, all that I have told thee, all that I have understood, thou has understood, all that thou hast seen of heavenly things, all that thou hast seen on earth, and all that I have written in books by my great wisdom, the Lord's book, the book of the Lord. All these things I have devised and created from the uppermost foundation to the lower and to the end. And there is no counselor nor inheritor to my creations. I am self-eternal not made with hands and without change. The Lord doesn't change. My thought is my counselor. My wisdom and my word are made and my eyes observe all things, how they stand here and tremble with terror. If I turn away my face, then all things will be destroyed. The Lord turned his face away from Israel. We got destroyed. Let's read. And apply thy mind, Enoch, and know him who is speaking to thee, and take thou the books which thou hast, which thou thyself has written, and I give thee Samuel and Raguel, who lead thee up in the books, and go down to earth and tell thy sons all that I have told thee, and all that thou hast seen from the lower heaven up to my throne, and all the troops. That's right. For I created all forces, and there is none that resisteth me, or that does not subject himself subject himself to me for all subject themselves to my monarchy and labor for my sole rule. Give them the books of the handwriting and they will read them and will know me for the creator of all things and will understand how there is no other God but me, the Lord's face. And let them distribute the books of thy handwriting children to children, generation to generation, nations to nations. And I will give thee Enoch, my intercessor, the ark straight Michael for thy handwritings of thy fathers, Adam, Seth, Enos, Canaan, Mahalahel, and Jared, thy father. That's right. I'm going to start to make this. This will be part one. I'm going to get more interesting when you go into part two. I think I'm only going to do two parts. But uh, not knowing what the Lord looks like is complete blasphemy. Um, it is imperative for a believer to know the face of the Lord so you can find his servants so you can learn how to serve the Lord. Um, this will be part one, and I'll be on the lookout for part two. Shalom.